In this video, we make landfall for the first time in Australia. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing, where we give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world in our round the world adventure. This picks up over halfway through our offshore passage from New Caledonia. So we're on day 10, it's a uh, Tuesday. Um, we left uh, a week from Sunday. So uh, this has been a pretty uneventful day in a good way. Uh, you know, I was pretty sure at the beginning of this passage we we're just going to put in 100 mile days and now it's seeming like we're putting in the closer to 110, 120 mile days uh, with no effort really because the winds are so strong. Um, it'd be hard pressed not to find some force for winds most of the day and so uh, it's just a matter of how much you want to go. Uh, I think the I think we're kind of getting close to I mean really it's it's two days away right we're about 220 miles less than that right now but uh, the, the tricky thing is that you can see it's almost sunset now and uh, so it just depends on how fast we go uh, we may have to you know, the, kind of the traditional thing is like to heave to. Um, kind of hard to heave to um, in any meaningful way. I think what we will end up doing is we'll be able to get through the barrier reef, uh, the Great Barrier Reef, which is actually just a bunch of separate reefs, uh, which you can just sail around. Uh, but then, will we be able to get into Cairns uh, before dark? Uh, and especially not just the entrance channel, but also all the way to the marina, which is somewhat down the river. Um, I did get some good news today that, that there, you can anchor outside the marina, so that's a possibility. The anchorage seems okay in the sense that it's not too deep. Uh, so we'll try that, I guess, if, if we can, you know, if we can get into the entrance channel with an hour till daylight, you know. Uh, hour to go, half hour to go, or whatever, preferably at least an hour, uh, but, you know, I, I think it's going to be really close, so the alternative is kind of just, uh, there's a couple places that are just like at the end of the, the barrier reef where they have moorings, uh, and there's actual land there, right, there's like resorts there, and so, so you just put up your cute flag, pick up the mooring, and then just not leave the boat, right? Uh, and then in the morning, just go directly to Marlin Marina. Um, because those places will be like, they give you a three hours, four hours. You know, you'll get there about three hours or four hours before you'll get to Marlin Marina. And so that, that in our case, would be the difference between daylight and darkness, possibly. Hopefully it won't be. Hopefully we'll have enough time to just sail right into Marlin Marina. Uh, you know, we've been sailing through these, this kind of large reef system. It's been actually relatively shallow compared to the rest of the Coral Sea. And, you know, as we sail through this, then uh, we'll sail to the Barrier Reef tomorrow, I think. You know, I think we'll be getting very close to the barrier reef by tomorrow night and I guess that's the other issue is how the arrival time we hit it at the barrier reef so we don't want to hit the barrier reef before uh, we don't want to hit there at dark right so it's conceivable it, if we if we have to hit the barrier reef at like 4 a.m we need to slow down before that right uh and then that's going to make it more likely that we're going to have to pick up the morning but i think either way you know if we got in late at night i kind of doubt the australian border force works 24 hours and they they check people in and also the question is like you know if it's not immigration like the border force there's also like biosecurity customs uh which also may require definitely will require me but may require all the crew members too so uh, so i don't think it 
it, I don't think it really makes that much difference if you pick up the mooring or if you anchor out or if you get in the marina at the, the very end of when the marina is open, which is at 6 p.m. I don't think it's going to matter that much because you're still going to end up sleeping that night waiting for the border force at a minimum. All right, but things are going pretty good. Uh, hopefully, uh, they continue this way. Knock on uh, fiberglass. So, uh, we're on, uh, I believe, Wednesday. And uh, so this is day 10 of the passage. Um, as I said, I was worried about uh, the timing of the passage yesterday, and I guess I still am. Uh, but, you know, my attempts at fine-tuning the timing uh, kind of blew up in my face today. Uh, the, the issue was that we didn't, we didn't have the strongest of winds early in the morning, uh, so instead of going three and a half knots, it made me a little bit worried that we are going to make it to the barrier reef at dawn, and then it made me uh, worried that, you know, we're not going to make it into uh, Cairns, Marlin Marina uh, by 6 p.m. Uh, or even even to the anchorage outside before nightfall. Uh, and so I turned on the engine against my better judgment because my my thoughts are don't turn on the engine on the passage in the open ocean. Uh, you know, you're just asking for trouble unless it's a really calm, calm, calm. Um, and it was, you know, it was good enough to make three and a half knots. But that worked for about three hours and then the engine died. And then, right before it, right as it died, we got into the squall system. And the problem with that is that the trades just disappeared, right? There was the squall acceleration, right? Uh, and I think there was one really good acceleration that I just let off all the sails, uh, that I let go all the sheets. but. After that, we only got a few more accelerations, which were, you know, maybe 20 knots, but mostly it was like nothing. And so, uh, or force one, you know, and so we couldn't make steerage way and the engine had died. So I bled the engine twice at the secondary filter and the upper bleed screw. And it started both times, but it didn't stay in gear very long. Although the second time, that was enough to get us out of the squall system so we could pick up the trades again, which were blowing at like force four or three. Uh, and so the that was great because we, we were just basically drifting at, at part of that kind of reefy area for kind of a, a long time. I mean, we were not close to any reef. We were still like 10 miles from the nearest reef, but you know, still not, still not totally open ocean. Um, the good part is that part of this coral sea seems to not get any ship traffic because of the reef, so that that was a bonus. You know, it's similar to sailing through the Tuamotus. If you have a good chart, um, you know, the Tuamotus are not like every 100 feet. They're like every 40 miles or so, so you can sail around them fairly easily if you know where they are. Um, you shouldn't enter the passes at night, but, you know, in terms of like avoiding them by four miles you can do pretty easily a lot of times so that was the same thing the reefs that we were sailing through and that's kind of uh, more or less what the barrier reef is like it's it's a lot it's more like sailing through the two motus maybe more tightly packed uh, than it is like a wall sailing through a wall or or uh, you know sailing through a reef entrance it's not really like that at all um, so the net result is we lost like, I don't know, four hours, five hours, I don't know, a lot of hours, six hours. Uh, so I don't know, I think it's kind of, you know, it's, it's uh, 
uh, when the, the boat is going six knots now, the, the computer says we could get there uh, before seven, but I don't think that's gonna be sustained. I think we're gonna get a three and a half knot period. And I'm just not inclined to try to boost the speed with the engine anymore. Um, finally, after the, the third bleeding, what I did was uh, I was like, the diesel is too low, and so once it stops raining, I'm gonna fill up the diesel, right? So when our thing goes down like uh, below full, it's typically like, you know, eight gallons have gone, right? Uh, so if it's, you know, showing a three quarters tank, it, you might be at like 11 gallons gone. So, so there's a lot of room for air bubbles to develop, you know, in waves. and. The, when the first one happened, I was just like sitting there on off watch, right, and trying to sleep. But I was like, oh man, this motion really worries me. I just can, you know, we're going. And I was like, oh no, we're going to get an air bubble. And we did. Uh, so there was a huge air bubble in the, I don't know, I mean, like, uh, a quarter cup of air, something like that, in, in the primary filter. Uh, and, you know, I'm pretty sure we don't have any leaks in the lines upwind of the primary filter. It's not really been a problem we've had with Contango. We had that problem where the line was closed. And, uh, but what, that was open. I checked that a couple days ago. Uh, and I just opened it, so it, it should stay open. Um, so, and it wasn't a, a big enough air bubble to be if there was, if it was, if it was open. The other thing is you couldn't, you couldn't, if the, if the, the thing was closed, right, the fuel line was closed, it, it has a, a valve. If that valve was closed, you could not, it, you could not motor for three hours. There's no way. You could motor for five minutes, maybe. Um, so... I just think we just had a fairly big, or maybe several fairly big air bubbles in the system that needed to be bleed, bled out. And it's possible there's more that need to be bled out, um, but I don't, I don't think so. I think I'm going to be hopeful, but uh, I'm also going to be cautious. Uh, you know, the, you know, these offshore passages teach you that the seas in control, the boats in control, the nature's in control. And you have to work with them, but not push them into things they want, don't want to do. And Contango does not like to motor in the open ocean. Um, you know, maybe in like uh, protected sounds it likes to motor, but in the open ocean, eh, not so much, uh, especially if it's not a calm. And so uh, that's, today was actually fairly low, wind, low wave day, which is quite nice, but still, so, I think that, uh, I think we'll get to the, through the reef tomorrow, the barrier reef. Uh, I'm not so confident that we're going to get into, uh, the marina tomorrow before dark. Uh, but it's, I think it's just as well, you know, if we get there on Friday, it's fine. Like I said, it's, it's, the ocean's in control boat has its own set of needs you have to respect the boat you have to respect the ocean and your timeline your desires on one of these offshore passages don't matter now you can help the boat out you can work with the weather but your personal desires do not matter so last night I told you I did not think we were gonna make it uh, here in time to get to, to the marina, but it looks pretty good actually in the morning. Uh, we got to the continental shelf actually a little early and had to take down most of the sails. We're making a decent four knots right now just with the stay sail and uh, double reef main. Uh, but we'll put out the Genoa in just a second. Uh, as you can see, we got pretty good visibility. The sun's still not come up as we enter the continental shelf. And then right after the continental shelf comes the uh, so-called Great Barrier Reef. Uh,
which is actually just a lot of little reefs uh, that are around the continental shelf. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I think we have pretty good visibility now, but you know, in terms of watercolor, you always like want noon, but we're not gonna wait for that. Uh, but it's looking good. It's looking good. I'm surprised. I was surprised that the the, the trades filled in so quickly, uh, so strongly, and uh, we averaged something like six knots uh, once we got past that that squall dead zone. Okay, so we had all kinds of problems with the engine dying uh, going into a uh, port there in Cairns. So uh, we had to anchor like twice, like right by the entrance to the marina in Cairns. And I was able to bleed the engine, get going, and then it just died right at the entrance to the marina. So we ended up t tying up on the, the end of the dock there uh, with the help of the, the marina's dinghy which once we got in the marina it was like super calm so it was enough for a dinghy that could tow us close enough to the dock so we could get there but thanks to the marina staff and cairns there uh the, and you know i mean the australian border force was also kind of eager to have us come in that night because they were all ready for that to go uh and so we just kind of got in there right at dusk which was but what are you going to do? The engine always makes you look like a fool. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing, where we give you the stories of the most interesting sailors in the world in our round-the-world adventure.